Hello, welcome back. This is John Buck again. Uh, today I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like to reverse or flip a signal in time. This is again one of the basic operations on signals. If you haven't already watched this, the, the video on basic operations on signals, you might want to go watch that first and come back here because this is just a specific example of, that, of one of the operations we talk about there. So let me get my whiteboard uh, visible to you. So again, to re if I'm a signal that's reversed in time, the way this looks in the equation I might say that the new signal y of n is equal to the original signal x of n or x of minus n. And again, rem uh, reminding you of something we talked about in the basic operation, the thing, the mathematics going on here is inside the bracket. Things that are inside the bracket are things that happen in time. So, so that should give us a hint that what's going to happen is going to involve things on the horizontal axis, not the y-axis. But we can follow the same process I talked about. When you're new to this, it's a good thing to do, is just plug these values in one at a time. So I could say I could set n equal to minus 2, and then I'll get x is equal to minus of minus 2, which is equal to, so y of minus 2 is equal to x of 2, which is, oh, I forgot to label my amplitudes here. This is the same introduction or basic signal we were using before. So let me quickly label amplitudes. So again, the y at minus 2 will now be equal to negative 2. And I can, if I want, sort of draw these as I go. So at time, if I keep them lined up here, I don't have to. But it's usually safer to do that. So this is the n. This is my new signal y of n. So y at minus 2 is equal to at n equals 2 has an amplitude of minus 2. y at minus 1 would be x of minus of minus 1, which is x of 1. If I come over here and check this, we'll see that that has height x at 1 has an amplitude of minus 1. y of 0 is equal to x of minus 0, which is unchanged. So if I go look at, at 0, x has an amplitude of 2. I can plug that in. And now I'm going to uh, encourage you to pause the video at this point and go through the rest of it yourself, finish the rest of the time indices, and then come back and check against mine. Okay? Okay, so now we're back. As you can see I've plugged mine in. One of the things I discovered while I was paused and went away is that, in fact, the, uh, the signal at time th uh, 3 got flipped to minus 3. So I should have started this a little sooner, right? If I had been a little more careful, I would have said y at minus 3 is equal to, to x at 3, which had height 1. But it's OK, because I caught it eventually. And so this, this operation of, of bringing a minus sign inside the bracket, like this, applying a minus n inside the bracket, means things are flipping left to right. It's almost like we took, sort of a, we took the signal and, and, and put this dashed line rated n equals 0, because that's the point that doesn't move. And everything, we flipped the two halves of the signal over on top of it. So what was on the left turned on to the right, and vice versa. This is an operation, again, we'll see some more when we get to convolution and, and uh, some other operations, too, where this comes up. So it's a good basic one to get some practice with. And there'll certainly be uh, chances to do that uh, in our class discussion problems, our worksheets, and in the first homework. OK, so again, just uh, to wrap up, yeah, the basic idea for, the, for this video was the idea of uh, taking a signal and flipping it or reversing it in time, which is what happens when you have y of n is equal to x of minus n inside the brackets. Also, some I'm just popping up my credits here at the end so you can see that if you're interested in our university, if you're coming from another school and interested in either uh, coming to our university for uh, undergraduate or grad, here's uh, some basic background and also a link to my uh, department webpage. All right, great. I'll see you next time.